Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Created by Rebecca. It's March and in celebration of March Madness I thought we would create this painting which features a March hare and a beautiful owl. <laughs> Let's get started. We're starting with a piece of watercolour paper from the Clairefontaine studio pad which I've attached to my board with some pineapple washi tape because why not <laughs> and I am using my Joe Sonia matte flow acrylic paints there's a list of the colours just coming up now but I'll also pop them in the description box below the video The night sky colour that I'm using is actually the Payne's Grey. It is incredibly blue, real midnight blue. And then just around the moon I'm lightening it with some sapphire and also some warm white. The moon is base coated in smoked pearl. And then I've got a few different mixtures of browns going on for the base coat on the field and also on the trees. I like to work in layers so I will almost sketch with the paint and to get the basic shapes blocked in and then I will start to refine them and add more texture and tone as I go along. Some artists will have their pencil sketch and they will start detailing up one area of their painting and then once that's done they will move on to the next area. I don't work like that. I had a wonderful art teacher during my A-levels called Mr. Hall. He really, really inspired our whole sixth form group. And he taught me to try and work up a piece evenly. That way if you want to move anything, remove something, change the tonal values or the colours, you can do that without having to unpick a completely finished piece of the painting in order to make it fit with the next piece that you've done. Everything is worked up at the same time, so you're using the same colours and you really get a sense of the tone you also don't end up with a bit that is super detailed and then you just kind of got bored with the rest of it. Mr Hall really was quite a, an incredible art teacher. I was very lucky to be in the group that he taught um, there was a, a bit of a clash with one of my classes and I was only doing two A-levels because I really only wanted to be there to do my art A-level but the clash meant that I might not actually be able to be in his class I would have had to have been with the other art teacher and I would have missed out on so much He had us paint him while he lit sparklers in the darkened studio. He set up these mad still lifes that we would sit in pitch blackness 
with just a few spotlights dotted around these piles of goodness knows what and we would have to just explore the shapes and the textures just all through these tiny tiny pinpoints of light he introduced us to the concept of land art and people who do sculptures for parks and gardens but created from for the very nature itself, stones, twigs, streams, earth. I loved art. I loved art. But he brought it alive for me and the whole class. The painting's moved on quite a bit now. We've got ploughed fields, we've got little bits of scrub underneath the trees. The moonlight is hitting the tops of the ploughed trenches. And I'm just highlighting the leading edge of the trees, the bits nearest the moon. You'll also see me pick out highlights on the far side of the trees, furthest away from the moon, just to lift them out away from the sky. And you get this reflected shadow on things.
Now we're moving on to the moon and we're starting to work up the shadows and highlights created by the craters and impacts that have happened on the lunar surface. I have one particular image of the moon that I work from so all my moons will look very similar Rather than rigidly sketching or even tracing the shapes of the craters on the moon, I'm just finding them and using my reference, looking at their location and their tonal differences, and putting them in an approximation of the right place. I'll put in some quite intense darks and then I'll start to blend those down Then I'll increase the highlights. By base coating the moon in the smoked pearl, it gives it that warm, luminous colour. And then you can pick out cooler highlights and shadows. I've used warm white to complement, but it still adds enough of a highlight. So you'll see that I layer and I layer and I layer. but eventually I will find what I'm looking for. Just below the horizon there is a beautiful crater which has some really distinct radiating lines from the impact of whatever hit the moon. So I've just added the indication of that and then soften them back. The moon is not the focus of the painting, but it is a major character. Moving on to the hair, if you remember back to the original sketch, you can see he's actually moved quite a long way down the painting. He was meant to be the further back and nearer the horizon, but I actually brought the horizon up to give us a bit more perspective. And then because he was going to be either enormous, where he was before, or really, really tiny to be in scale with the trees, I decided to bring him forward down the field a bit. Hares have this beautiful agouti coat, which is uh, where they will have one colour up the shaft of each hair, but then the tip will have a different colour. You see it quite often in guinea pigs, and so wild rabbits have this same agouti. And it means that in different lights you see different colours. He's sort of beigey, fawny buff in some lights, but then you get this really Almost foxy red.
After adding all the detail to the hair, we then ground him by adding a shadow just to really set him in his landscape. And as the hare leaps across the field, he's watched by an owl. Now this particular owl actually happens to be American. He is the northern barred owl and the barring is the beautiful dark feathers that come down his chest and he is an incredibly floofy owl. He's, I have completely fallen for the northern barred owl. They are absolutely gorgeous. And a, f and a fun bit of trivia, the northern barred owl's call actually sounds like, who cooks for you? And even though he's only quite small in the painting, you can still get a surprising amount of detail with him. I'm using some very fine brushes here. Now I'm adding in a galaxy of stars, just by using a slightly fluid version of the smoked pearl. They're not going in in any particular pattern, just where I feel the painting needs them. And then just on the edges of the undergrowth, underneath the trees, there's a carpet of primroses and snowdrops in honour of March. here are a few still photographs of the finished painting. There we go, all finished. Obviously the moon and the owl and the hare are the main focus of the painting but I really like the symmetry of the trees and the little sprinkling of the spring flowers just in amongst sort of echoing the sprinkling of stars in the sky. Very soon this painting is going to be available as a print on demand in my Redbubble shop. If you've not heard of Redbubble before, uh, this isn't a sponsored content. I just upload my artwork onto their website. I have my own shop on there and you can print <laughs> so many different things. Um, here's my lovely fox. You can see I've got him here as a sticker, which I've put onto my paintbrush pot. And then I've got a notebook, really nice rules in the notebook, which has a fancy schmancy pocket at the back. But my print proudly on the front there, really nice ring bound notebook. I've also had him and some of my other pieces printed just for myself as postcards. And you always get free stuff with your Redbubble order as well. Not from me, but from Redbubble. I've got all sorts of pieces on there from my more complicated paintings to some really sweet little dog cartoony illustrations. Um, 
that just, I know they would look absolutely fantastic just as little stickers. I love them. So I pop over to my red bubble shop. There's a link here and there's also going to be one in the description box below the video. You'll find all my designs are available in a multitude of different things that you can print onto. Baseball caps, t-shirts and sweatshirts, aprons, notebooks, laptop skins, mobile phone cases and we've worked really hard to make sure that everything is going to fit onto whichever of the items we've enabled and it's a really inexpensive way to support an artist like me. Right that's it for this week's video thank you so much for watching please remember to like share and subscribe to me here on YouTube and until next time Bye.